the rare developmental anomaly shown in the radiograph is called okay what you can see in this radiograph is that this is the crown and from the crown you have the pulpal tissue over here from the crown you have some invagination and then there is a sudden uh, increase in the canal space and then again you have the canal so this typical appearance that you are seeing is very characteristic of what is called as dense invaginatus so what exactly happens in dense invaginatus is there is differential proliferation of your cells now in the uh, morpho differentiation stage now because you have differential proliferation some of the cells which are present of the inner enamel epithelium they start proliferating downwards so there is a so this is your cap stage or bell stage whatever so these are your inner enamel epithelial cells from one particular region the inner enamel epithelial cells start moving downwards as a result of this there is a completely new tooth which is for, which is formed within the already pre existing tooth jaw so this is the exact pathogenesis of dense invaginatus the a pgi question was asked as to fluor they lists f e l e u r they lists okay this is seen in which condition and the answer to this is dense invaginatus now oler's classification is very important when you are reading about dense invaginatus because he was the one who had given he who had classified dense invaginatus based on the extent to which the invaginatus invagination is present so type 1 is limited to the crown up to the cej okay type 2 is into the root beyond the cej with no communication to the dental pulp that means you have an invagination however the entire dental pulp is normal of its own type 3 is it extends into the root and communicates laterally through the through a foramen with the pdl but there is no pulpal communication so what do you mean by this is you have a complete invagination however it is communicating with the pdl but there is no communication to the pulpal space and type 3b is extends into the root and communicates apically to the communicates apically to the pdl however it also there is no communication to the pulpal so if what the main difference between type 3 and type 4 is in type 3a and type 3b sorry is that in type 3a the entire invagination com communicates only through a pseudo foramen whereas your entire type 3b is it communicates completely only at the apical region so such a region is what is called as type 3b okay